Hi there, Brian. Um, Stronzo5785 from a nondescript little city in the southwestern part of the United States. I'm going to get right to it. We've got a lot of information to put out in this uh, in this vlog. A lot of times, as I go through and review the argumentation used by my um, by my Muslim friends, a lot of it is based largely in fallacious arguments. So I figured, why not spend some time and define what an argument is? I'm going to use Dr. Stephen Toulmin's definition in his book, The Uses of Argument. It has become more or less a standard in academic argumentation and debate. Um, it consists of six points. There are six pieces to it, but the first three are required. The first one is a claim or an assertion. It's a conclusion whose merit must be established. I am a U.S. citizen is a great example. The data is the facts, the evidentiary information, empirical data that supports that claim. I was born in the United States. The warrant connects the data to the claim, thereby supporting your argument. People who were born in the United States are United States citizens, therefore I am a United States citizen. That's my warrant. There's three additional elements. Backing, which is which are credentials intended to to certify the statement and further support the data used to warrant the the claim. I can produce a birth certificate. I can produce pictures of myself as a child um, in locations in the United States. Rebuttal are statements which qualify in one way or another, or which don't qualify, which the, recognize the restrictions of the legitimacy of the claim. If I have been convicted of espionage or treason, then that will call my claim to be a United States citizen into question. That's a rebuttal. A qualifier consists of qualifying words or phrases, possibly, probably, as the evidence shows, and the strongest, which is necessarily. When the necessarily qualifier is used in either the claim or the warrant, that renders conditionality to the claim, the data, and the warrant. I am necessarily a United States citizen would add conditionality to the statement that's used in the warrant. People born, in the, if I say I am necessarily a United States citizen and I use the warrant, people born in the United States are United States citizens, that adds conditionality. So the last three are not necessary. They are intended to strengthen the argument or strengthen the counter argument. Nonetheless, we're stuck with claim, data, and warrant. Now let's move on to some popular fallacies that are used. I'm going to use a lot of Islamic examples. I'm even going to use Christian example, very important Christian example that frankly makes me bristle when I hear it, but we'll get to that in a moment. The first type of fallacy, let me define this clearly. A fallacy is a component of an argument which, being demonstrably flawed in its logic or form, renders the argument invalid in toto, in whole. The word invalid I'm using is incogent, non-coherent, or just plain incorrect. It renders the entire argument invalid. The first type I'd like to talk about is the material fallacy. The most common material fallacy used by Muslims is the red herring. The red herring consists of four specific types of argumentation. The first is the ad hominem, which is a personal attack, attacking the credibility of the person making the claim or the data, the source used as part of your data. That person was convicted of a crime, so I can't trust what that person says as a source. That's an ad hominem attack. It's also a fallacy. Popular sentiment appeal to the majority. We see this all the time. Oh, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, so all your friends are doing it, it must be right. That too is fallacious. It doesn't appeal to any factual evidence. It just says everybody's doing it, so it's got to be right. There is a fear. There's an appeal to fear, which is a common red herring, or the ad baculum argument. Christians unfortunately use this like this. They will state, well, 
if the United States government becomes an Islamic government, all of my personal freedoms, the Bill of Rights, is going to get torn out and thrown, torn up and thrown out the window. Christians do use this. However, Muslims have been known to use this same type of argumentative fallacy. The fourth is conventional propriety or appeal to authority. I hear this all the time. Islamic scholars have stated this is basically calling someone, some undescribed person, an authority and appealing to what that person said. When I ask you for a source, I'm asking you for the authority to which you're appealing. That's going to be an exception. I'll mention that exception at the end. Second, we have a verbal fallacy. The most common verbal fallacies are equivocation, the use of a word that can be defined in multiple different ways based on the context and the sense in which it's used. The word become is used by Muslims in the following way all the time. Jesus was God but became man, therefore Jesus is no longer God. In this case we are defining the word become in a very narrow sense. We can't do that with that word because, good example, myself, I was a professional musician, then I became an engineer. That indicates an adaptation or a, a learning, a gaining of a credential. You can't, that's an equivocation. It's a very, if you're called on it, it's definitely a verbal fallacy. It's an argumentative fallacy. The second one is proof by, ver, proof by verbosity. And it, there's a related material fallacy the fallacy of many questions. That's where you just start throwing claims out, throwing words out there, just filling up your 500 words you just any way you can. Keep in mind the purpose of the red herring, the purpose of the fallacy is usually to divert attention away from the data. So by introducing multiple questions or using a verbose way of expressing your point, you're in essence not giving the other person an, a chance to respond or you're putting so many questions in front of that person they're overwhelmed by the sheer volume of, of verbiage coming at them. These are commonly used fallacies. There are others but I won't go into them because I'm limited in time. The third form is a logical fallacy. The most common one is the elliptical argument or the circu or circular reasoning. Um, I say that the Quran is the word of Allah. Muhammad wrote in the Quran that it is the word of Allah. Therefore, the Quran is the word of Allah. That is relying on a self, that's, that's a self-reliant fallacy. You're relying on part of the claim to establish part of the warrant. In that way, you, reasoning in this manner is fallacious. However, it's not fallacious for the Bible. The Bible is a compilation of 66 different texts collected over a 1,500-year period. By quoting the book of Psalms, a, a, a chapter or a passage in the book of Psalms, to back up the claim that Jesus Christ is God the Son, you're actually quoting two different works written by two different authors in two different times and possibly two different locations. That is not a form of circular reasoning. Um, now, there are exceptions to this. If both sides agree that, that the, the authority used in the argument from authority is a reliable source of information, if that person's judgment is accepted and that person has researched their assertions and have provided effective argumentation, we can use that person as an authority. Good example is Bart Ehrman. I disagree with many of his conclusions, but he knows a lot about textual criticism. He, he, he overemphasizes the textual variance, and he makes, in my opinion, a very big deal about not a whole lot. But when it comes to the sheer, just pure knowledge, the man's an authority. And if correctly quoted about a subject which he is aware, textual criticism, and acknowledged to be, if we, if we acknowledge his factual evidence, he's an excellent authority. 
and I would accept him as an authority in certain conditions. So here we have some basic fundamentals of argumentation. I do hope you receive them in as they were intended. I want this to be the beginning of further communication. I want us to communicate, but without all of the fallacious argumentation, without all the dependence on bad sources, if I ask you to source something, I'm not being angry, I'm not being combative, I'm simply asking you where you got your information so I can go check it out myself. My name is Brian. I come to you from a small town in this nondescript little town in the southwestern part of the United States. I do wish you the peace, joy, and blessings of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Son. God bless.